Michael Hayes comes out. You know, he's always the bearer of bad news. And he's like, hey, man, you're going to have about three minutes. You know, you're going to have three or four minutes. And, like, everybody there was kind of like, what the fuck? Rewind, recap, relive. For over 50 episodes, the revolutionary force in wrestling interviews. One more career specific for you, Mike, before we wind it down. Your time in WWE, maybe the biggest moment on paper was when you were put into the, the World Heavyweight Championship chamber. And I'm just curious how that came about because it seemed like a, it seemed like a great opportunity. It definitely did in your career. Yeah. Uh, so I'm curious to see how it came about. Well, I can't be bitter about it because right. how many people get to wrestle in the Elimination Chamber, bro? Exactly. You know yeah. Just the like, same thing with like Survivor Series when I got beat so fast, like, who yeah. the fuck did they did that? Mm-hmm. You know, I, so anyways, I knew Cena real good. I know Kane real good. Like I was friends with Jericho, like everybody in that match. I had just done like an eight month run with Ray, you know what yeah. I mean? So we knew what we could do. I hadn't been in there against Edge before. And um, so we're starting to go over the, we're starting to go over the thing, which I wasn't even supposed to be in that match. If you remember, they threw me in like the week before because I don't know if somebody got hurt or if somebody was just like, hey, throw the kid a bone or, or what. But we were doing a house show in Canada somewhere. And they were like, hey, bro, you're going to go over this battle royal tonight. And I was like, okay, cool, man. And it was like a weird, like, 12 person or 11, whoever they could muster. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they're gonna be, we're going to go over that thing and you're going to go to the elimination chamber and it's going to qualify you for that. And I was like, you gotta be shitting me. <laughs> like, I, ain't won, I ain't won a match in eight months. Like, what are you talking about? You're gonna put me in the damn main event. Like, yeah. you know, so again, I think they're messing with me, which they may have been, they may not have been. But we get in there, you know, when I start talking, we start talking over with all these guys. And uh, I'm like, okay. I was like, they're like, hey, we're gonna let you go get out of there second or third or whatever. And he's like, we're gonna let you stay in there for a while. So you can show people what you got. And I was like, oh, hell yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, I had all these yeah. ideas. I was like, holy shit, I'm going to do all this stuff. They had never let a big guy do it before. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, like, right. And then, you know, Michael Hayes comes out. You know, he's always the bearer of bad news. And he's like, hey, man, you're going to have about three minutes. You know, you're going to have three or four minutes. And, like, everybody there was kind of like, what the you know what I mean? Like, I mean, even Edge, the guy who I'd never been in the ring with before, was disappointed as hell. You know, Cena, like, we had the finish, we had the finish where I was getting eliminated, like, out taking the FU off the gimmick, like, into the girders, and, like, all this oh, really wow. cool, like, a cool awesome. death. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, a cool death. And then, <laughs> uh, you know, ended up, you know, they ended up shortening it down. They're like, listen, man, we got to make sure this guy gets over and this guy. And I was like, God damn, they're already over, bro. I was yeah. like, yeah hook a brother up you know what i mean like <laughs> you guys got me all fired up for this thing you know what i mean yeah. like let me run just for, at least for a little bit man like let me run for 10 minutes right kill me you know run let me run for 10 minutes and then like i'll put guys over i don't care like let me base these guys off the top of the cage like let's do some cool stuff yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but i'm not the i'm not the man with the pencil you know what i mean yeah. exactly yep you, you know, you do your, you do your job, you'd be a good soldier, you know what I mean? Like, especially at that time for me, you know, I was like, you know, I wasn't making too much money. I was just kind of floundering along in one like little spot, you know, and they gave me this shot to get up, you know, and I, you could be better about not being able to do more. But in that time, in that four minutes or wherever they gave me four or five minutes. Yeah. Uh, I'd forgotten about it at the time. And like since then, I didn't really think about it too much. And there was a clip that actually came up like on YouTube or something of that match. And even though I was only in there for a little bit, I whooped some ass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can tell. You I was mad. <laughs> That's awesome. You could tell I was mad, man. But you know, <laughs> it's such as it's such as life. You know what I mean? It's a show. Yeah. It ain't personal. It's a show. You got to do what's best for that. You got to do what's best for the for the entertainment value. And if you know, who knows, man, if I'd have been in that match for 20 minutes and got down to the end of it, where it was like, you know, me and Cena and, and Jericho or me and whoever, whoever was there edge, you know, maybe, the, maybe the crowd would have been shitting on me by then. You know, you never, you never know. I don't think they would have, yeah, yeah. but you never know.
when you think of what we've seen in some chambers, like I know at the time you weren't exa- you weren't a face, but you know Santino and some of they always seem to leave that underdog till the end. And at that time, with the people in that, I would have considered you the underdog. So yeah, you you really never know. But I don't think they would have either. I think it would have made yeah. for a for a cool thing. I do. Yeah. But that that's still still a very cool opportunity. To yeah, have, really have in your career. yeah, it was very cool. One of my one of my highlights for sure, man. Not many people could stand in that box. No, you know, with the lights going off and like all that, you know, real. real. How is that being in that box? I don't, I feel like I've never had someone on from. A, I definitely haven't had anyone on from a chamber. Is that a? It's unique experience, I'm sure, right? Oh, it's bad. It's so surreal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you just look at it, like I don't know, bro. I I never experienced nothing like it before, and I sure ain't since either, man. No matter how yeah. hard like the people try to recreate it, like on like indie shows or TNA or whatever. Right. Like, right. It just ain't the same, bro. You know, no, oh. definitely not. Yeah, claustrophobic at all in the pod yeah. there, or <laughs> it looks tight, especially as a big guy. I imagine you got about, I don't know, maybe like maybe like four feet, four feet, okay. four feet, or something like that. Not too bad. I, I was like, man, I was chomping, I was chomping at the bit so hard to get out of there. I was like, I was headbutting the damn thing. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. man, I better not do it too hard. Just get it, get it fall off. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Plexiglass, you can't break. Yeah, bro. So yeah. you're supposed to do a spot like a stage is supposed to spear somebody through it or something. I'm over there smashing it and it just falls off. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, um, definitely one of the coolest. Yeah. Definitely one of the coolest moments of my career for sure. Rewind, recap, relive. For over 50 episodes, the revolutionary force in wrestling interviews.